I've driven in Sweden in the winter several times to the same area and I'm just used to seeing like snow everywhere, all the lakes are frozen and driving down the road I could just see that every lake I could see, I couldn't see any frozen lakes. It's saying plus 3.0 degrees. So it's heating up? It's heating up rapidly. There was newscasts on Swedish radio, they put out a public announcement that the lakes aren't safe. The lake was physically melting and it felt like a race against time. Worst case scenario, if, you're, if your car does fall into the lake, we can pull you out of the lake with a tractor or something. Oh my fucking God! So, um, where do we start? This is my car. I left it in Sweden, but it's not in Sweden anymore. A lot of people question, do you miss your car? Was that a good idea? I questioned myself, but I left it there so I could potentially and hopefully go ice drifting. The reason I went over ice drifting in the last video was just basically a practice event for what was coming a few weeks later. I spoke with Alexander and um, a friend of his, Morgan. Morgan is good friends with Frederick Asbo. And he said uh, in three weeks time, uh, Asbo is coming down here and uh, he's bringing two guys over from FD. They're all going ice drifting. We're having a little bit, a bit of an event. Um, five or six cars. Uh, I'm sure you can tag along if you want to bring the laurel. So I said, uh, yeah, sounds like a good idea. So that was the context for us all going to Sweden to go ice drifting. I, I got back, I told the lads, uh, you need to book flights. In the meantime, the weather got really warm in Sweden and uh, my friend Patrick called, he said uh, it's getting warmer than it should and it's a bit early for winter to be over but the lakes are melting. So we've just seen it as a, a fun holiday maybe and uh, go play around with the car, have fun with the lads. The following day, we got up and uh, we went to the lads shed. They have loads of BMWs and Volvos and they're just, they're basically like a Swedish version of us here. They call themselves No Coast Racing. look around the lad's shed, always good to uh, check out their good shit. I was clutching onto straws hoping that we could go drifting. I think uh, the plan to go drifting in Sweden didn't happen. Uh, Asbo and the Norwegian guys had gone f like several hundred miles north in Norway to go drifting so it was it just wasn't feasible for us to go there. We have an option which sounds a bit sketchy to go to a lake tomorrow but there's no ice between the land and the ice. We're gonna go there and try to get onto the lake and hopefully the car doesn't sink. Like this, bridging the gap. Bridging the gap between life and death. Yeah. Alexander, he said, um, my brother has, um, he has built a track on a semi-frozen lake. It's, it was, at the time it was, they said maybe safe enough to drive on, not sure. I spoke to Patrick, I said, do you think this is a good idea? He said, I wouldn't do it if I were you, 
but you're here it's your choice we'll help you with whatever you want to do so it was a tough decision the lads had come over we had great plans of uh, this fun drift event and i felt kind of bad because uh, i told the guys to book their flights and it was going to be some hopefully crazy event for a chance to come out of nowhere that we were potentially had a chance to go ice drifting i said okay let's drive there tomorrow let's get the car ready if i don't feel confident enough with the lake i won't go there Cable tying the headlights and the grill on. Back the on, because they came off the last time. And I have this, this radiator is. blocked off. It's not getting hot enough here. Really, like, even after half an hour driving, it's It just stays really off. cold, yeah. which is not great for engine. No, that's not great when you're driving around here. So we put that in and more down there. So it's only like 20% of the rack, it's not blocked. We stick it or tow hook, insulation tape barrel. Yeah. So the car is pretty good then, it's running. Yeah, it's fine. There wasn't much to do. No. This side right here is broken. Most of it's in the car, but don't need to fix that. It's worse than I thought, actually. The lake has been melting the last two weeks. Yeah. Because the weather got really warm. It just started heating up. It's yeah, fun. it's not my fault. It's your fault. We plan to come here to do some ice drifting, so we're hopefully going to do some tomorrow. It's a bit sketchy. It's just first one and a half meter sketchy. In the middle of the lake, it's between, this thick. Between 30 and 35. Okay, and on the outside of the lake, it's it's between zero and none. So yeah, zero and water. At least it's fresh water. We can just pull it out and dry it off. But it's <laughs> air in the tires, so yeah. it might float. Yeah. I'm not worried. Really but the studs bad. are kind of heavy. heavy, so maybe it sinks anyway. I'm a little bit nervous that the car is going to sink. Yeah. Everybody is actually. Oh, thank you. Hello, I'm going on the ice. <laughs> it's great that you found Advans. Well, they have never seen them here. Yeah. It was just complete coincidence that I got them. Did you do this art? Yeah, that's my artwork. It's very arty. Piece of side skirt. Piece of side skirt. Protect the wires for the Everything has a, has a function. Let me see. It's been a while since I've been in this. Yeah. I've been in it twice since. Sweden, in the Laurel. Yeah. It's a bit weird. This is why we left it here. <laughs> to do the most random shit ever. Should be interesting. Yeah. I'd say no matter why you're gonna try and get on the lake. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Doesn't really blend in. <laughs> Trying to be uh, incognito in in Karstad. Yeah, so it's morning. Yeah. We're gonna try and go to the lake, but it's two degrees. Yeah, we're gonna get to the lake, no problems. <laughs> to get on the lake. Yeah, that's the problem. As we drove there, I've driven in Sweden in the winter several times to the same area, and I'm just used to seeing like snow everywhere, all the lakes are frozen, and driving down the road, I could just see that 
every lake I could see, I couldn't see any frozen lakes. So I was thinking, where did he find a lake that is frozen? Because all I can see is water. One side is white, one side is green. And I didn't want to drive my car in water. It's not amphibious, it's not waterproof. I don't like cold water, so I was nervous. <laughs> we just passed the cops and they Yeah, were... I know. So that looks like you're just, everything's in, in order here. Oh. <laughs> now you're legal. Yeah, this blends in. Really just suits the Swedish backdrop. It looks like a car that a Russian person bought from Japan on the auction. You don't look Russian though. I do now with these on. Oh yeah, actually. What's your name? Vladimir Petrol. <laughs> it's saying plus 3.0 degrees. So it's heating up? It's heating up rapidly. And that's not good if you want to go in the ice. No. Yeah, they made an official statement that uh, all the ice in middle Sweden are in bad condition. On our way there, typical, there was newscasts on Swedish radio because people spend a lot of time on fishing and walking and drifting on frozen lakes in Sweden. They put out a public announcement that the lakes aren't safe. Um, be extra vigilant. Don't go on the lakes unless you have to. They're melting. I remember being there, taking off the winter tires to put on the snow tires to go on the lake. I could see the lake. It looked more frozen than other lakes we'd seen. I was just shitting bricks. Excited? You look excited. <laughs> this used to be ice. Yeah, look. Now it's slush. Everywhere, we, everything around us was just melting. It was plus three or four degrees, which as far as I'm aware, ice melts at zero. So that meant the lake was physically melting and it felt like a race against time. This is kind of a stupid idea. But yeah. <laughs> we drove down the hill, a big field, big grass hill, we could see the lake and the closer I got to the lake I could see that around the edges of the lake were melting or not attached to the ground. It was dodgy and it was warm and were we making the right decision? Can you tell me again how this is a great idea? <laughs> Alexander was on the phone and he said, if it was me, I'd go on. If my brother says it's safe to go on, it's safe. And I trust them, they're my friends, and they wouldn't put me in danger. 
So I said, okay, worst case scenario, if your, if your car does fall into the lake or sink, your ECU will be damaged and your wiring and stuff like that. And we can pull you out of the lake with a tractor or something. Yeah, I don't want to lose my ECU. I don't have anything. This car is everything to me. I don't have anything else. Um, but it was like a risk reward type way up the options. It was really sketchy. The process of getting the car onto the lake was not straightforward. The lake is very broken and very wet. This is definitely one of the fucking stupidest things ever. We tried to talk them out of it, but yeah. film this. We're here, so it didn't work. Yeah, this looks like a new crack. Best of luck. Jesus Christ. The further away you get from the edge of the lake, the ice is thicker. So once you get onto the lake, the theory was you're safe. I like the way the puddle just keeps moving here. There's a Swedish old fisherman right there and he is thinking that we are the and biggest I've... idiots ever. The actual feeling of getting onto the lake, when we got on, my car was on the lake. I knew, I knew 100% then it was safe. Everything was fine. It was fucking grand. I was like, right, I'm ready to drift. That's over us. If we can't get off the lake, I don't give a fuck about that right now because we're on the lake. This is a massive track. It was like four or five kilometers long. Daniel done a really good job. It was huge.
This is the fucking best shit ever, man. Yeah. We're some fucking idiots. It's great. Just freedom, and it was great. Just one other car, Daniel. He's a he's a great driver. We had we just had fun all day. The only time you have to come in is when you need petrol or you have to cool down your tires. Huh? You might say the spikes on the tires actually heat up and get too warm and they bend, they bend forwards and you don't have enough traction because the rubber is hot so the spikes actually um, are not doing their job. The, the level of driver input, steering alignment is just out the window. It doesn't make a difference. I was worried about that. But once you're on the ice, it's just 100% like adjusting and steering and it's, there's a lot of grip, but it's completely different. <laughs> we thought we were coming here and not going on the lake. Yeah, so that's why I'm so happy like. All this effort paid off. Spot. You're out of fuel. Yeah. Daniel said no maybe we should get off the lake. We got lucky. Yeah. It was great. We came here with the thoughts that we weren't going ice drifting, and we went ice drifting. We went slush drifting. Yeah. That's a new experience. It is a new experience. Yeah, you gotta drive this 100 kilometers back. 102 kilometers. <laughs> a lot of people say, Why did you leave your car in Sweden? I was away from my car as such for 18 months. Wouldn't you like to be driving it here on the road or doing events in Ireland? Uh, yeah, I would, but I feel I had a lot better time leaving it there as such. There's not too many events in Ireland, unfortunately, that I'm too interested in. The fact that I've done three GAT bills, two weekends on ice, flew to Sweden, drove my car back from Sweden to Ireland, like, that to me meant a lot. The car didn't miss a beat. I've blown some RB20 gearboxes, but this car has been through hell and back with me, but in the best possible way. This is how bad the lake is. Yeah, time to get off yeah, the lake. It's a good idea to be out here with a car. That yeah, worked. Oh. What? <laughs> how are you feeling now? Cold. My toes are freezing. Yeah, I think both of us are wearing the wrong yeah. footwear. You can't really see it with the trees, but the ice is water. It's starting to turn into water. Uh, we took the tires off, the spikes, the spiky tires off the car. Uh, we had lunch in Daniel's house, and then uh, we were driving down the road on the way back to Karlstad, and it looked like the lake was gone. You couldn't see any snow. Yeah. The lake had disappeared, so we went to Sweden with no expectations. We'd done some unexpected drifting. We didn't sink. I was highly inspired by Japan and the fact that they, they use their cars and all these nice looking cars. They just have so much spirit to them. And I took that and we built this car and it's very Japanese inspired. And. Uh, it just gave me more drive to be like, okay, I'm gonna use my car for what I've made it for. And I put it together to drift the car. So ice drifting was a special extra. And I don't get a lot out of my car sitting there or going to shows or polishing it. And that's just me. I don't think I'm abusing my car. To me, I'm just using it to the best I can. I'm using it to advance my skills, to have fun. It looks good. I love, I like taking pictures of it. It's also a good fucking crack to drive it. And that's how I feel about that. Thanks for watching <laughs> this true love story. <clears throat>